We must go on to discuss earthquakes next, for their cause is akin to our last subject. The theories that have been put forward up to the present date are three, and their authors three men, Anaxagoras of Clazomene, and before him Anaximenes of Miletus, and later Democritus of Abdera. Anaxagoras says that the ether, which naturally moves upwards, is caught in hollows below the earth and so shakes it, for though the earth is really all of it equally porous, its surface is clogged up by rain. This implies that part of the whole sphere is above and part below, above being the part on which we live, below the other. This theory is perhaps too primitive to require refutation. It is absurd to think of up and down otherwise than as meaning that heavy bodies move to the earth from every quarter and light ones, such as fire, away from it. Especially as we see that, as far as our knowledge of the earth goes, the horizon always changes with the change in our position, which proves that the earth is convex and spherical. It is absurd, too, to maintain that the earth rests on the air because of its size, and then to say that impact upwards from below shakes it right through. Besides, he gives no account of the circumstances attendant on earthquakes, for not every country or every season is subject to them. Democritus says that the earth is full of water and that when a quantity of rainwater is added to this, an earthquake is a result. The hollows in the earth being unable to admit the excess of water, it forces its way in and so causes an earthquake. Or again, the earth, as it dries, draws the water from the fuller to the emptier parts, and the inrush of the water as it changes its place causes the earthquake. Anaximenes says that the earth breaks up when it grows wet or dry and earthquakes are due to the fall of these masses as they break away. Hence, earthquakes take place in times of drought and again of heavy rain, since, as we have explained, the earth grows dry in time of drought and breaks up, whereas the rain makes it sodden and destroys its cohesion. But if this were the case, the earth ought to be found to be sinking in many places. Again, why do earthquakes frequently occur in places which are not excessively subject to drought or rain, as they ought to be on the theory? Besides, on this view, earthquakes ought always to be getting fewer. It should come to an end entirely someday. The notion of contraction by packing together implies this. So, this is impossible. The theory it must be impossible too, 